the Tudor North Flag. We've heard of this watch before, right? I'll forgive you if you haven't. It was a model that arrived on the scene before the Black Bay soared in popularity, and compared to most of the current watches in the collection, this piece dared to be different. When we look back at it now, the 2015 release of the North Flag was quite a significant watch for the family because not only was its design taking on more of a 70s approach with an integrated case, a retro futuristic typeface used for the Arabics, an external power reserve that we would see on the dial, all of these elements were inspired by Tudor's classic, the Ranger 2, but it also debuted Tudor's first in-house movement. Now sadly we know that this watch wasn't as well received as many notable models in the Black Bay collection and it was discontinued, even though today, right now, we still look back at the North Flag as a clear example of Tudor's renaissance period. But one thing that people never seem to talk about is the significance behind the name. The fact that the Tudor North Flag is a tribute to an expedition, the British North Greenland Expedition of 1952. And before digging deeper into this video, on the wrist today is the Smith's W10 from 1969. It's a great little watch, it's a classic. The field watch for the ages, and a fitting example I think, especially with today's topic. This is one watch in the collection that will always have a place. And all of us, deep down, should have a love for field watches and what they represent. So why are we talking about this, the British North Greenland Expedition? On Sunday, July the 3rd, Tudor took to Instagram and shared a story documenting the original Oyster Prince model used for the expedition, and the final page with a countdown timer, the 70th anniversary of the Greenland expedition, saying, strap yourself in. I think we should all be prepared for a watch release, and at the time this video is going up, going live on the channel, it's happening in two days' time. For a lot of years, I have been asking the Tudor takes another look at the North Flag collection. More importantly though, I want the emphasis to be put on the North Greenland expedition, because I feel like the North Flag collection, when it was released, this expedition just wasn't emphasized enough. It's such an important part to not only the brand's history, but the entire collection itself. Bear in mind also that this expedition happened a year before the summit of Everest. And also that these watches that were supplied for the expedition experienced two full winters in frigid temperatures. This entire expedition lasting from July 1952 to August 1954. Quite simply then, the BNGE is Tudor's equivalent of Everest, and the watch that should be commemorating this moment in history should be relatively important, don't you think? So this pairing of the expedition and the Tudor relationship could not have been a better campaign. The BNGE was created to study the geology, the climate, and the location of previously unexplored territories of Greenland, the mountains, etc. I won't go into too much detail. And with all of the information gathered after these two years, the process also helped greatly in the development of cold weather equipment, clothing for civilians and military personnel, and highlighted the real-world applications of mechanical wristwatches in such climates. The Tudor Oyster Prince was introduced the same year in 1952 and as a part of a promotion and advertising and simply user testing, Tudor issued these watches to all of the members of the expedition. A really interesting part of the agreement to send these watches was that each wearer had to document the watch, focusing on how it wore on the wrist and its timekeeping day in and day out. And all of this documentation was recorded in logbooks that the wearers would keep. And instead of just using these watches for timekeeping, they would also use them for navigation too. Because as we know, compasses are not able to be used that far north, they're basically compromised. So through the BBC on the UK mainland, these wearers were able to check the accuracy of their watches daily. And after two years away, these recorded logbooks were given to Tudor as confirmation, which helped them understand their watches more, but also to embellish the Oyster Prince story in advertising campaigns for many years. And it was a great little watch, 34mm self-winding, a relatively new technology back then. It had applied markers, either batons, some with quarter Arabic markers, alpha hands, a no date arrangement with a white or a cream dial. Interestingly, all of these models were equipped with longer than average leather straps to be worn over jackets. And the testimonials from these wearers over the years cemented how great these pieces were, how ahead of the time they were especially being used as daily watches. You would read about that these watches were beaten up every day out there. The mechanics and engineers working outside in these frigid temperatures on vehicles and equipment. The scientists crossing the vast empty landscapes on dog sledges. The wearers often ending up in water by accidents if they fell through the ice. So all of these pieces were exposed to extreme moisture and huge temperature variations on a daily basis. Their precision and accuracy at the time barely deviating, recorded every single day. The testimonials from the watch wearers would say that they never had to take the watch off to wind it. And these truly became daily companions. 
It's such a great story, one that's probably the least spoken about in our collector lore. Imagine being issued this watch back then. They weren't treasured, they were just used, like any other piece of equipment at the time. So this year, being the 70th anniversary for the North Greenland expedition, how does this intersect with what Tudor has released at the moment, its most popular watch, the Black Bay Pro? As much as I'd like to say that we'll be getting a Ranger or a reinterpretation of the North Flag, I don't think that the brand will be dedicating huge resources into this project. It would be nice to see these ideas explored again, but we must remember that this is modern Tudor we're talking about. And since the Black Bay has pretty much epitomized the brand and its identity now, I don't think they're going to deviate too far away from the brief. So logic and watch releases don't often go hand in hand. I think generally when we talk about Rolex and Tudor, this happens a lot of the time where we get ideas completely wrong. And I'm assuming all of this, so we don't know if this is going to be an actual launch or not. But since we are talking about polar exploration and a GMT watch, the natural idea is that Tudor gives us what I'm going to call the Expedition Black Bay Pro, or maybe the Tudor Expedition Black Bay. A simple polar dial with cream loom plots and the unmistakable Black Bay case. And why I think this will be such a good idea and a great example of an under the radar release is that this watch will be calling back to the original Explorer 2s, the 16550. The first generations where their loom plots would age and some of their dials would even age with them. I'd hate to say that this is an obvious idea, this is all a prediction. But everything lines up so nicely with the current release of the Black Bay Pro. With a significant anniversary that helped establish the original Oyster prints and the fact that the Pro is a GMT, a navigator's watch, that is built almost entirely for exploration. Now maybe it's just me who's thinking this, but I prefer this rendition of the Black Bay Pro compared to the standard black dial. I think this would add such a nice touch of character to the Black Bay Pro without overstaying its welcome. It still looks highly functional, highly professional, but there's also a level of playfulness to it. And if we compare it to the current generation of Rolex Explorer 2s, you see that it has faded plots. It just fits very nicely into the criteria of what defines this watch and its ethos. Now maybe yes, I am overreaching and I'm stretching too far with an idea like this. It's quite a significant upgrade with this line, especially since it's just been released to suddenly go with a white dial variation. But if this release does happen and this is right, I will be astounded. Because it's a piece that does pay it forward, it looks to the heritage and the history of the name. The background and development of polar exploration has evolved a lot over the last 70 years. And a watch like this epitomizes that. Because today a 24 hour GMT hand is insanely practical when you travel so far north or south, where the sun neither rises nor sets at certain times of the year. And the best part of all is that these watches are twice, maybe four times more rugged than those original pieces. So this is just me spitballing a few ideas, saying that I love the idea, the notion, the concept would be brilliant, especially if it was executed like this. And hey, put it this way, if not now, the year that the Black Bay Pro has become extremely prominent, I do strongly believe that we are going to see a polar dial model like this very soon.